My name is David Silver, owner of the Vintage Watch Company based in London's Burlington Arcade, the largest collection of vintage Rolex watches on display anywhere in the world. I know many of you out there love the Daytona model, so today we're going to focus um, on all aspects of the vintage Daytona pieces, the chronographs, the early Daytona models, the Paul Newman variant or exotic dial as Rolex called it, and then some very special Tiffany cosine double signature pieces as well. To understand the Daytona, you've got to understand a little bit more of the history prior to the Daytona. The Daytona is not the first chronograph setting wristwatch that Rolex made. During the 1940s and 50s, there were uh, pure chronograph versions of these pieces. It's only later on that the Daytona um, name sticks and, and starts to be printed on the dial. But if we run through some 50s watches um, first, you'll understand where this three um, sub dial design comes from and the tachymeter scale um, as it's produced by Rolex and where it's placed on the dial and how it then moves outside of the face of the watch itself onto the bezel. So 1950s pieces had a totally different styling altogether. Um, very clean, simple cases, smooth bezels and all the details and scales on the dial itself. This piece is absolutely magnificent condition. Original stretchy bracelet and it has a two-tone track across the dial itself. Very vibrant red, very vibrant blue. Another example of this reference has absolutely faded out completely. The colour has gone from the original cream and the blue itself on the scale also faded totally to an olive green and I've paired it with a matching strap to give the intensity of colour and on the wrist is really extraordinary. The original pieces had very small subsidiary dials as you can see when you look close up on these watches and then there is quite a marked difference as the sub dial gets larger. The next model along is known as the pre-Daytona so I don't have it in front of me here but I will show you in the book the examples of pre-Daytona watches are where the colour on the face is completely the same, the sub-dials and the face of the dial itself is all in one colour, made in steel um, with a silver dial, a dark grey dial and a black dial and also made in gold, uh, 14 karat and rare in 18 karat. So when the Daytona itself is born in 1963, Reds make the decision to have a contrast on the face. You'll have a black dial with silver subsidiary dials or a silver with black subsidiary dials. And the Daytona as we know it now can really be seen in these early pieces. The styling is the same. The most important feature for these pieces is the bezel. The tachymeter scale that was previously held within the dial itself has now moved out onto the bezel. And it's beautifully engraved and has that extra kind of detail that makes the watch appear larger now. First versions still retain the manual pump pusher, as they're now called, and the screw down crown in the middle. So we've seen the early chronograph pieces from the 1950s, reference 6034, 6234. Talked about the pre-Daytona model that comes next, reference 6238. It's all one color still on the dial. Moving into the first Daytona model, 6239, black dial, silver dial, with now the tachymeter scale on the bezel. The option with that model was the 6241, one of the rarest 60s pieces, with the black bezel on the outside. So as the 6239 has the steel bezel, the 6241 variant has the black bezel, making the watch appear larger. The next big invention, if you like, for the Daytona pieces was the making the pushers themselves waterproof. The idea that the uh, water would get through the actual um, pushers themselves, Rolex designed a screw down operating pusher. And these models start as the 6240 here in front of you, an early 6265 model, silver dial, black registers, and the steel bezel. The early pieces are known 
as sigma dials. They have the Greek symbol for sigma at the bottom next to the Swiss T text. So these are quite special and unusual. 1972. Another sigma dial here in black, but with the black bezel now, so the model 6263, also from the year 1972. Then comes Daytona written in red, the iconic piece, big red, big Daytona, very bold at the bottom of the dial, hugely desirable, very sought after watches, standing out, standing out against the black background in this watch from 1974, reference 6265. Also, a bit of a silver dial, Daytona in red again. Then 6263 with the black bezel from the 70s and 80s, black, silver. So the 6263 and 6265 pieces as we've just seen in steel were also made in gold. So important to show you champagne dial black registers, black dial champagne registers, then again, the 6263 model with the black outer bezel. So now for the special pieces, the exotic variant of the Daytona, um, later known as the Paul Newman, and some double signature Daytona model. The starting point for the exotic dial is the reference 6239. As we've seen in the other Daytonas, the same configuration exists, manual pump pushes, steel outer bezel, black Paul Newman dial, square registers, outer minute track in red. It was available in the cream or white faces also, and this is a rarer option, 6262. Steel bezel, cream face much rarer options again with the black bezel. So two Paul Newman dials here in front of you. 6241 reference, extremely rare reference, very special, black and white. As if the Daytona itself isn't rare enough, Tiffany in New York began to retail the watches and were allowed to co-sign or double sign the dial themselves. So you see Rolex Daytonas, retail by Tiffany, signed by Tiffany dual signature pieces, very, very special. So there you have your whistle stop tour of the Rolex Daytona, Paul Newman, Tiffany dials. Next up, the GMT Master.